Well, hey, uh, every, every week we start off our, our time together by reading a, a portion of Scripture, and today is no different. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn with me. Um, we are going to be in the book of Matthew. If you don't have your Bibles and you have your phone, uh, take out your phone. You're not going to offend me. Um, I'm, I'm a millennial, so I can, I can hang, all right? It's going to be all right. Uh, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 3 today, verse 11. And I think it's fitting because we're, we're baptizing people. And, and uh, so Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 says, I baptize you with water. Those who re- repent and turn from their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, we, for those of you who, who don't know this, we've been in a series about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Diving into, man, what does it look like to have the gifts of the Spirit alive in us, working in us? And, and we've actually, we've named them, you know, the, the gift of, of prophecy, the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation. We have the gift of, of wisdom, of knowledge. I mean, there's, there's just a litany of them. There's, there's nine of them. And we've, we've spent time asking the Holy Spirit, will you do this? Will you baptize us in your Holy Spirit? Will you give us the gifts of your Spirit for the betterment of your kingdom? That's what I love about the gifts of the Holy Spirit is they aren't for, like, they, they aren't for lifting you up. They're for lifting up the kingdom. They're for bringing the church together. They're for encouraging the believers. And, and it even says uh, in, in Acts chapter 2, which was where we were last week, that when people speak in tongues... When people act in, in the gift of healing, when people uh, have the gift of prophecy, it attracts people. It attracts those who don't believe in Christ. It attracts people who, who have been far from God. And I think the, the, the greatest thing that we have done as a church is not limit the Holy Spirit. And we want to continue to open our lives to whatever he wants to do, to what he uh, has planned for us. Um, <laughs> this this last week I was I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw a clip on Instagram of a pastor who was talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit as it pertains to a, a chiropractor. Now, if you were with us last week, that's that was my message. And so I kind of felt a little gypped like maybe someone someone was, you know, taking my message or then maybe people would think I copied that person. But we were talking about alignment and how the Holy Spirit, man, when he's in someone's life, he brings alignment to the spine. He, he, he opens things up and you get your range of motion back. And what I love about this whole thing is that the Holy Spirit saw fit for two pastors to preach the same message at the same time, hundreds of miles away from each other. That means that likely we're on the right track. That likely there is something that the Holy Spirit is wanting to do in and through his church, the body, the big C church. And we get to come alongside that in a real and powerful way this morning as we watch people get baptized. As we see people take a huge step in their faith to be like Jesus. See, baptism, water baptism, is a challenge of character. Most people don't look at it like that. It's actually when the candidates come forward and when they get in this water with me, it is, a, it is a challenge of their character because they are openly saying, I'm choosing to follow God. I'm devoting my entire life to what he has for me, not what I want. In fact, I'll give up. I will die to myself to make sure that that happens, that his will is done in my life. So we step into the likeness of Christ in, in that uh, that always comes with a challenge. There's never a time when you're going to be called like Christ and it won't challenge you. And I think that's, that's maybe what keeps Christianity and, and the Christian walk fresh. There's always going to be a challenge to be like Christ. And today we get to witness it. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm really, really excited. The beauty of, of baptism, both water baptism and spirit baptism, like we've been talking about the last couple weeks, is their communal experiences. See, somewhere along the way, we put baptismals in churches, and we hid them away where only people who know about what's going on see what's going on. But the purpose of baptism was so it would be a sign to everybody, 
So that's why when we, when we tell people, uh, you know, hey, here's, what, here's what's going to happen on Baptism Sunday when you get baptized, we want you to bring your friends. We want you to bring your family. Some of you took that to the max. I'm looking at you guys over here, okay? <laughs> but, man, bring, and, and, I, and I like telling our church this, we, we have to bring heathens to church. We have to bring sinners to church. We have to bring people who don't look like us to church because otherwise this is a club meeting. And that's never the way that the, the Spirit wanted his church to be. It was never supposed to be a clubhouse. It's supposed to be a hospital where we bring people in and we say, there is a hope and a healing for you through the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, watch how it happens. That's why we do baptisms outdoors now. And, and I love that we have uh, a ton of people here today that get to witness people being baptized, people taking that next step in their face, saying, I, I, I commit my my life to Christ. But the same is true about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Cuz what good is the gift of healing if you don't have anybody else to heal? What good is the gift of prophecy if it doesn't encourage anybody? What what good is the gift of speaking in tongues and the interpretation of tongues if it doesn't build up the body? If it doesn't encourage people around them. In fact, in Acts chapter 2, it says people were standing outside the building where they were speaking in tongues. And they were saying, man, they're drunk in there. What is going on? What a rager that is. And Peter comes out and gives one of the greatest messages of all time. And he says, no, 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 no. They're not drunk. They are completely filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, this is God's power on display. And we get to partner with that today as we baptize people in water, but as we also seek the gifts of the Spirit together. That's the authority that we're baptizing in, by the way. We baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we believe that when you come to Christ, man, he, he has already taken things from you. He's already drawn you close to him. He forgives you of your sin. And then you walk in the power and the authority and the anointing of Jesus Christ himself. Because when, when Jesus walked away uh, from his disciples and, and went to heaven, he said, I'm going to give you someone who will be your comforter. I'm going to bring you someone who will be your encourager. I will bring you someone who will be your counselor. And that's the Holy Spirit. And so that's what we have been studying about for the last four weeks. And, and I know that normally we tell you, like, hey, we've got, you know, two more weeks in this series. And, and i got to be honest with you, I don't know how much longer we have in this series. Because part of teaching the series is showing that we're just going to do whatever the Holy Spirit wants us to do. We're not going to put a time limit on it. And that doesn't mean we're not prepping. That doesn't mean we're not planning and being responsible. We want you to come to church knowing what's going to happen, but we also want to be open to whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do. And then praying that, that every day that we meet together, we experience what the Holy Spirit has for us. That we experience the life-giving and life-changing authority that Christ has. So, our vision statement for the church is we want every person to experience what God can do through you. That's pretty simple, right? It's innocent enough. We want you to experience what God can do through you. We don't want you just to see it. We want you to experience it. We don't want you just to look at it and read it in scripture. We want you to live it. And then it can't just stop with you. It has to go through you. You have to be a conduit because that's the way that Jesus did his entire ministry. So Christ is constantly calling us into his likeness. He calls us into his death and his burial and his resurrection. Did you know this? That it says our sin was with him when he died. He, he died for our sins. That's something that we all get to take part in together. We get to experience that together. And then it says one day, one incredible day. We were just singing about it in Amazing Grace. We will be raised to life again with Christ. And so that is why we call our baptism services our, our raised to life services. Because this is the embodiment of the death and the burial of Jesus and the raised to life portion of that blessed hope that we have. Guys, this should be exciting. And if it's not, I, I want to challenge you to check your hearts. Because what people are doing is committing their entire lives to Christ by, by being baptized today. We get to see one of the most physical uh, uh, demonstrations of who Jesus is today. That's exciting. 
So let me ask you this. What does it mean to be raised to life in Christ? Well, we believe that we were called to live the way that Christ lived, both before and after his death. That includes his resurrection. So since Christ overcame the grave, then we're called to overcome the grave. We're called into that same eternal life. To be raised to life is to be saved from a life of sin. But then I know that there's probably some people who are like, okay, I get it, but what does the baptism symbolize? Well, have you heard, well, not, not you guys. Anybody older than 40 in here? Cool. <laughs> Let me talk with you guys for a second. Sometimes I feel more comfortable with you. I gotta be honest. Um, I'm, I'm caught in between Gen Z and, and the boomers, and sometimes I identify more as a boomer. Um, and the more time I spend with them, the more time I feel like you. So... <laughs> Have you guys heard them say, like, oh, that's a mood? If you haven't, then just stick with me. They are, they are explaining, like, man, I, I really identify with that. I feel that on a level that I don't normally feel things. Baptism, it's not a mood. It's a move. It's a move. You are showing that I am actively walking after who Christ is. I am pursuing the best thing that he has for me. It's a move. It's a move from death to life. From sorrow to hope. From fear to excitement. From dread to expectation. You no longer have to live in what you grew up in. You no longer are tied to what you've done. You have a hope in who Jesus is, and he's coming again for us. And so we get to participate in that today. So why do we baptize? Well, we baptize for three reasons. It's following Christ's example. We read it earlier uh, in Matthew. I want to read it out of Mark. He says it a little bit different. John, being John the Baptist, announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am. So much greater, in fact, that I am not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I identify with that. Anybody identify with Scripture when you're reading it? Like, man, I am not good enough to untie Jesus' sandals. I have those days. I had one of those days this week. We got the call that we weren't going to be at Heritage this week, and I was like, oh, okay. God, what are you doing? But it was funny. As soon as uh, Pastor Phil called me, he said, hey, we've got a little bit of an issue. We, we've been through COVID together, guys. Uh, we have walked through, I think he said this is our 10th location. This is not the first time we've had to deal with this. So I remember he said, we've got a little bit of an issue, and I thought, okay, whatever it is, we can handle it. You know why? Because we've got the Holy Spirit with us. Because he's not bound by four walls. Because it does not matter where we are, he's with us. He's, he's in control. We told, I mean, some of you guys were with us on launch day. From the very beginning of this church, we said, this is the, the Spirit's church. In fact, one of our core values is we want to yield to the Holy Spirit. Whatever he wants to do, he gets to do that. And I think he saw it fitting that we all meet here today. But then he goes on and he says, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Then verse 9 says, one day Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. So we follow Christ's example. In fact, there's, there's a lot of different parallels, if you look at it in Scripture, between uh, uh, water baptism and the spirit baptism. In fact, one of them is uh, it, it's dying to sin. It's, it's the full immersion. This is why when we teach our essentials class, we tell you uh, when we do baptize, we baptize by immersion. It's not to discount anything else that you've ever experienced in your life. If you were sprinkled as a child or baptized as a child, this does not, does not uh, wipe that away. We just believe that Christ was fully immersed, and so that's why we are doing this. But then there's a parallel in, in, in the spirit baptism where you're saying, man, I am fully immersed in, in who the spirit is. I am actually giving myself to be in the Holy Spirit. So we get to take part in that today. We also get to... Uh, we also get to act in obedience. That's the next thing. 
We baptize because it's an act of obedience. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20 says this, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Did you know that the Holy Spirit is in this verse? I've never seen this before, so I, I, I learned something from the Holy Spirit this week. Remember when Jesus went to heaven and he said, I will send you a comforter. I will send you someone to be with you. And then in this verse he says, I will be with you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. I will be with you. I will be in you. I will encourage you. I will counsel you. I will give you gifts. And then it says you have to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So then the Great Commission isn't just about using your influence to, be, uh, to bring people to Jesus. It's also about being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Great Commission says go and make disciples. Now we, we don't have a great translation for this in the English. So really what it means is as you are going, make disciples. It means whatever you're doing, make disciples. It's not like you have to go to, to another country. You don't have to go to somewhere else to exclusively, exclusively be used by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Praise God. Because otherwise we would have been useless the last 10 months in COVID. But isn't it powerful that the Holy Spirit knew ahead of time what was needed? And so he said, as you are going, as you are going to work, as you are dealing with your kids, as you're in class, make disciples. And that is going to require that the Holy Spirit work in and through your life. So the third thing, the final thing, is baptism is a public declaration. It is a public declaration of, a, of an inward decision. In fact, Mark 16, 16 says this, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. Now, that's not supposed to scare anybody, right? The way that Jesus works is he encourages people, he brings people to himself. He can convict, but he, he ultimately wants you to be with him because, by the way, he has already died for anything that you will ever do. And that's one of the most exciting, one of the most exciting parts of, of Christianity is as long as you are continually submitting to him, he's going to be your Lord. He's going to be your Savior. He's going to work through you. Now, I have explained it this way, and, and if those who are getting baptized would go ahead and get ready. I don't know if you need to take your shoes off, but we're going to do this pretty quick here. Um, I've explained baptism this way. It, it is like the wedding ring of your relationship with Christ. It's the outward symbol. See, I, I, I wear a wedding ring. I don't wear a wedding ring to tell me that I'm married. I wear a, we a wedding ring to tell everybody else to back off. <laughs> I, I wear a wedding ring so that people know I have made a very specific commitment in my life. I wear a wedding ring so that my wife knows I'm all hers. <laughs> Easy, babe. It's going to be okay. <laughs> I mean, it's Valentine's Day, so. Um, I, this is the wedding ring moment for a lot of people in their, in their relationship with Christ. And I, and I love that because this is the outward expression of their faith. They made a decision on the inside, I don't know, maybe months ago, maybe years ago, maybe a very long time ago. But this is the moment where they get to say, actually, I am completely in. I'm giving everything I have to who Jesus is. And, and he can use me in any way that, that he wants to. Now, one of, the, one of the prerequisites, I guess, for baptism is that we would come into alignment. We talked about this last week. We would come into alignment with the Holy Spirit's will in our lives. And the Holy Spirit's will for our life is for you to, is for you to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I promised our church that every single week we will give an invitation for people to come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Because if we don't do that, this is pointless. And this is too much work to be pointless. This is too important to be pointless. And so I don't know if, if you showed up today thinking like, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch my friend get uh, held underwater for a quick second. I, I don't know if you came not even knowing what was going to happen today. And I don't know if you're, if you're watching online with us and you didn't know what you were going to see today. But I want to give all of us an opportunity to, to make sure that our hearts are right with, with Christ. And so would you do me a favor? Would you bow your heads with me? We're going to say a simple prayer together. The, the only requirement to accept Christ into your life is that you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and you profess it with your mouth. And so we have an opportunity to do that this morning. And we're going to pray a prayer together, and I'd love it if you guys would all pray it with me for the benefit of those who are saying it for the first time. But say, Dear Jesus, I ask for forgiveness. I invite you into my life to make me like you. If you just said that prayer for the first time, I want to welcome you to the kingdom. You guys just made the most incredible decision you will ever make. You just dedicated your lives to Christ. Now, the other thing that we do as a church is every time we baptize people, we open it up. If you haven't been baptized and you want to be baptized, let's do it. There's no better time than the present. In fact, we have towels, we have shorts and t-shirts, everything that you need in the, bat- in the bathroom in there. Uh, go get changed if you want to, if you want to join with us. But then we have, we have an awesome opportunity to worship God in a real and powerful and tangible, exciting way this morning as a church. So I'm going to invite those who are getting baptized to come forward. Let's do this. Hey, real quick. Come on in, guys. Come on in. We're going to take a second, and and as each one of them gets baptized, we want to lay hands on them. We want to pray over them. We want you to stretch your hands out to them. But before we do that, I want you guys to know how proud we are of you. This is a big move in your life. We are honored to be a part of it. We are excited that you're taking this step, but you guys have a responsibility now. This is, this is your, your kind of gut check. You have a responsibility to live like Jesus. Because you're telling everybody, everybody here, everybody online, everybody for the rest of your life, you're Christ's. You're going to live the way that he wants you to live. You're going to say the things he wants you to say. You're going to do the things he wants you to do. You have that responsibility. You're taking that on as we baptize you today. Now, church, we have a responsibility, too. We have a responsibility to hold them accountable, to come to them in love and say uh, encouraging words. Let them know what, what they're doing is meaningful and powerful. But then as time goes on and you see things in their life that maybe aren't quite right, I want to encourage you, go to them in love and say, man, I love you. And because I know that you're a Christ follower, I want to encourage you in this way have a responsibility to come alongside them and make sure that all of our lives are lining up with scripture but today your lives line up with scripture because you're doing what jesus said to do so i'll tell you what salvador why don't you get in here first come on around here (laughs) awesome well this is salvador um I'll tell you what, would you do me a favor? Would you tell us when you came to know Christ as your Lord and Savior? Um, like a month ago. <laughs> I love it. A month ago. That's awesome. And what has been what has been the difference in your life since you came to know Christ? I've been changing a lot, like um, like my thoughts and everything. So give me good things in life now. That's awesome. He's changing your thoughts and he's giving you good things in life. Well, that's what he wants to continue to do. All right? Can I give this to you? Yep. I'm going to have you scoop right here. You guys can't see if you want to stand. All right. Well, Salvador, on your confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
All right, will you tell us your name and, and when you came to know Christ? Uh, Emmanuel and I think last week. Thursday. <laughs> I love this. So for those of you who don't know, every single week we have small groups. They, they run Tuesday really through Thursday nights, and we've got a bunch of different groups. But <laughs> he got saved in one of our small groups this week. Woo! This is why this is why it's important to be tied into a community. This is why it's important to grow in community through small groups because we got to see a life change on on Thursday and now we get to see life change on Sunday and now we get to watch it happen for the rest of our life. What has been the the, the difference in your life since you accepted Christ on Thursday? So the last 3 days. <laughs> that all uh, good things have been happening. I love, it. I love it. What you need to know something you need to know that Jesus is proud of you this morning. And we're proud of you this morning. You have a community of people here who are excited about you and, and, and we're passionate about seeing you succeed, but we're more interested in seeing you become like Jesus. I'll tell you what, would you reach out your hand? I want to pray over him real quick. Father, I thank you for Emmanuel. What a powerful name to carry. That you're with us, that you're not leaving us, you are, are here next to us. And so, Father, I pray that you would live through Emmanuel, that you would uh, continue to show your grace to him. But, Father, as he takes this next step, would you bless him? Would you go before him and fight battles that he knows nothing about? Take care of him, we pray. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Are you ready to get baptized? Come on over here. And, Pastor Kyle, before you do it, uh, this is, uh, where, did, where did Salvador go? Oh, this is his nephew. So cool. Okay, so this is, yeah. All right, man. Well, on your confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, this is Ryan, Ryan Siegel. Um, <laughs> yeah. We're pretty big fans of Ryan and his wife, Elizabeth. Uh, when we were starting the church, we were praying, God, would you give us a place in Tustin? Would you give us someone who would open their house to us? And we went to a carnival outside, and we set up a booth, and these guys stopped by our tent and said, oh, you're looking for a place. Why don't you come and use our living room? They didn't know us. They just invited us in. And, and they've been a critical part of our church ever since, man. So yeah. we're just, we're so grateful for you guys. We're so yeah. proud of you for taking this step. But I'll tell you what, why don't you tell us when you accepted Christ and what the difference has been since you accepted Christ? Uh, well, I mean, I, I grew up in a Christian home in the Christian faith, and I've always considered myself a, a follower of Christ, but I've never actually taken this step on under my own volition. That's really cool. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm here. Awesome, man. That's so cool. And, and what I love is uh, is he, he brought his family. He's got his kids and his wife here. He's got other friends and, and family here. But would you just stretch your hands out towards Ryan? Father, we are so grateful for the work that you are doing in and through the entire Siegel family. But, Father, thank you for the step of faith that Ryan is taking. God, I pray that you would anoint him and strengthen him and go before him and take care of him. But, Father, I pray that you would bless him for this step that he is taking. I pray that you'd keep his kids close to you every single day of their lives. I pray that you would give him and Liz everything that they need to continue to parent those kids and to raise them to be like you. Father, we're, we're grateful for this family and for the friends that they are to us. We love you and praise you. Amen. 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 Are you ready? Cool. Step on forward here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm 5'10". He's a little taller than that. <laughs> well, Ryan, on your confession of faith, man, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Coolest 
things that we get to do as a church is see families changed. And we get to see families make decisions for Christ. And so this is Stella. This is Ryan's daughter. Yeah. 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 There you go. Cool. <laughs> nice. Now we can all see you. Hey, Stella, tell me, when did you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? So cool. And what has been the difference in your life since? <laughs> Has he made you like a better sister? Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Has he made you a better daughter? Yeah. Careful, because I can check that answer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, we are so proud. I'm really proud that you're taking this step at nine years old. This is amazing. Would you guys do me a favor? Would you reach your hands out towards Stella? <laughs> Father, thank you for a young woman who wants yes. to be just like you. God, thank you for giving her the courage to, to uh, step out in faith mm -hmm. and be baptized. Mm -hmm. In front of all of her family and friends, God, I pray that you would bless her. Keep her close yes. to you every single day of her life. God, that as she grows up, she grows more closely to your heart and to your likeness. God, we ask these things in your precious name, and we said together, amen. 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 Well, are you ready to get baptized? Well, your daddy's going to help me with this, okay? Why don't you stand over here for just a second? All right. Yeah, we're going to turn just a little bit. All right. There you go. What we're going to do is we're going to cover your mouth and your nose with one hand. There you go. All right. You want to help me on that side? Cool. Well, Stella, on your confession of faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. through our small groups. Uh, we got to meet her two years ago, four semesters ago. And uh, she came into our group and she was quiet and shy. And we have just seen so much growth and healing in her life. It's been amazing to watch. And so you need to know we're proud of you. We believe in you and we are excited about this step that you're taking. Would you do me a favor? Stretch your hand out towards Brittany. Father, we're grateful for the work that you are doing and have done in Brittany's life. I pray now that you would continue it. Continue to bless her. Continue to speak to her. Continue to breathe life in her. Yeah. And then I pray that you would raise her up to do incredible things for you and your yes. kingdom. Yes, Whatever Jesus. that looks like. Yes, Father, Lord. we're grateful for Brittany and, and the commitment that she's making to you this morning. Amen. We love you and praise you. Amen. 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 You ready? Cool. I'm going to have you stand right here. Awesome. And we're going to cover your nose. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. On your confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son. I got to see, I truly believe it's from God that I got to see my 
my grandfather every every weekend for the last six months before he passed because I felt I I truly feel God moved me by just allowing by me allowing him into my life to to do what he sees fit. I I feel that I got that experience because of God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Also, you need to know that we as a church are proud of you. We have seen so much growth in such a short amount of time, and we're excited that you're a part of this with us, but we're excited that you're taking this step of faith today. Yeah. Amen. And we're glad that you're doing it with us. Amen. We're, we're honored Amen. and privileged. Hey, would you do me a favor? Would you reach your hand out towards Kevin? Yes, Lord. <laughs> Father, what an honor it is to partner with your people. Thank you, Jesus. And God, I thank you so much for the gift that Kevin is, not just to Legacy Church, but to your kingdom. God, I'm grateful that there are things that you have put in his heart to do for your kingdom. Now I pray that you would seal it in him, grow it in him, continue to grow in him every single day and go before him. Father, I pray that you would speak to him, speak through him, and use him mightily for your kingdom. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, man. All right, again, I'm going to switch over here. I'm going to help you out. Don't take me down with you. All right, let's go ahead and I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for, for making this work yeah. for us. I know that, that uh, this has been a wild season, um, but we're honored that you're here. We're honored that you got to take the next step or, or, or watch people take the next step with us. Man, how cool was that? Oh, Sunday was awesome. Uh, we're putting this video together a couple of days later, but I just wanted to let you know how incredible it was on Sunday to see people get baptized, to see them take the next step in their faith journey. And we're so glad that you are a part of it. And I want you to know, you really are a part of this with us, man. We're, we're so grateful for all of those who partner with us through uh, giving financially to this church, through attending, through watching online, through sharing these messages. It means the world to us. So I want to say a quick thank you to all of you who join us uh, as a part of our online fam. And you guys are valuable to us. We're looking forward to, uh, to what God has in store for us. Hey, I want you to know this. I say it every week to our people there in person, but I want you specifically to know this. You online watching right now, I love you, and I am praying for you. We're believing good things for you. We'll talk soon.